so um, this new bean lesson for today is going to be on jump bridging um, because it turns out that a lot of new beans don't know how to jump bridging it's pretty cool um, it's a way to get from one system to kind of like a far away system and I'm gonna teach you more about it first I'm gonna go over like some basic rules and mechanics of jump bridging then I'm gonna show you a little travel fit bestower I have over here um, and then I'm going to go through the actual route and how you actually jump bridge in space uh, then I'll teach you a little bit about jump fatigue and then I'll go over some possible alternatives to jump bridging rules of jump bridging um, so what like jump bridge is is a module that a corporation can anchor to a POS that allows a player to jump some systems over in space. Um, the amount of systems usually ends up being like 5 to 12 systems and it's a weird number like that because jump bridge distance isn't actually measured in jumps, it's measured in light years. 5 light years is the maximum range. Um, light years in Eve as a mechanic is like physical distance like if you look at your star map those those little lines are actually like space in space um, so so that's what jumping in Eve the distance is measured by not gate jumps so knowing that mechanic is kind of important for knowing how jump bridges work and why we have stupid mids that we just have to deal with um, so, uh, there can only be one jump bridge per system as well, so if you have a maximum range of five light years, but the system you're trying to go to, in our case Yuvho, is like eight light years away, what you can do is put a jump bridge kind of midpoint, in our case it's in K7D, and then warp to the gate to OGY, jump through, and then use that jump bridge to get to U of Ho. Still saves you a little bit of time and some jumps and some danger. Um, it is kind of inconvenient, but I guess this is CCB balancing from years ago. Back in my day, we had as many jump bridges as we wanted per system, which was kind of OP and no one ever died when they were moving through zero zero, which kind of sucked if you are a badass killer but uh, yeah this is how it is now one jump bridge per system five light year distance um, and they're anchored on posses and so that means that the posse can be reinforced by our enemies and the actual jump bridge can be attacked and um, the jump bridge takes fuel the fuel is liquid ozone right here and the liquid ozone that takes is determined by the mass of the ship that's jumping through so if you have a bigger ship it's going to take more LO and we could run out of LO in the jump bridge hopefully that won't happen but if it does, no big deal. Just contact your director. The director will fill it for you. No big deal. Don't panic. But if that does happen, oh, please warp off. Don't just sit on the jump bridge and die. That'll be really bad for you. <laughs> so, so now I'll go over with you a travel fit bestower. It uh, sounds kind of crazy to be traveling in a hauler because that usually seems pretty dangerous. And because it is actually kind of dangerous, please never, ever, ever use these bestowers ever to haul things that you care about, please. <laughs> um, so this is a bestower. Um, it takes Amar Industrial 1, so you'll have to train Amar Industrial. But luckily in the skill book, as of up until 118, the skill book pack, has the MR industrial skill book in it so you should have it trained um, so the bestower we would use it to travel through jump bridges because it has a 90% reduction to jump fatigue which is pretty cool it's its roll bonus 
you can see right right here yeah 90 percent bonus so that's where we're gonna take it it'll reduce our jump fatigue and i'll tell you more about jump fatigue and how it works at a later portion of this video and uh so the fit micro warp drive really important i hope by now everyone knows what micro warp drive does if not you should probably go back to earlier lessons uh, shield extender just in case um, and then we've got some nanofibers nanofibers increase your agility and your acceleration I believe your velocity yep and uh, inertial stabilizers they make you align faster so we're just gonna be trying to move pretty quickly in these basically we're just using them as a fancy shuttle so we don't have to deal with jump fatigue and um, NBI will be handing these out so if you need one just ask us and we'll hand you one so um, now we're gonna go ahead and take the route uh, it's probably a good idea before you undock to check local to see if any bad guys are in it I already did but let's go through and check again we're good okay oh way too close so the first thing you do is go to corporate locations JB warp to it two zero um, you might have noticed too that this um, JB moonwalk that is a point that's on the other side of the pass I believe I'm not gonna mess with warping to it but I'm pretty sure that it's on the other side of the pass and it's to warp to right after you jump through or if there's any baddies that might kill you so we're in warp we're good and um, so it's important to note too to I'm gonna do this a little bit slow because I'm a baller but when you're doing this please 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 try to do this very quickly um, and if there are bad guys in local they could be camping the jump rigs. you aren't like safe here because it's very just because there's a pass with guns you aren't safe because there could be like cloaky ships all over here trying to just attack you and people do and people probably will because we're in that alliance full of new players so please don't just sit and like dilly dally on the jump bridge it's it's a bad idea <laughs> so you just um right click and jump through I believe you have to be within 2500 meters I was I was close enough to jump through ah! and we're in K7D on another POS that's owned by us and if you right click if you're trying to go the opposite way from Yuho to um, A2 there's a jump bridge bookmark and jump bridge we walk to we'll warp there just to show you what's up where it lands you on the other side of the pause and if if uh, if there are like say this guy was cloaky camping our jump bridge please move quickly <laughs> just be just be aware that he could be camping it oh, so anyway uh, now if we're trying to go get all the way to Yuvho we want to move to OGY because that's where our next jump bridge is but we're gonna need to use a ping because don't warp just gates to gate so we're using a ping because it's a bad idea to warp to a, a gate directly there could be a bubble this guy is in system and I'm pretty sure he is cloaking I recognize him so he could kill me pretty easily <laughs> this is a really long warp I don't I don't really like this warp but um, also while we're um, in the instructional phase pay attention to these little timers there was an orange timer that'll be your cooldown timer this is your fatigue timer and um, I'll explain more about those in a little bit so we are at a ping and the gate is clear no bubbles we're good to warp down and hopefully there's nothing on the other side I hope we're watching Intel that's probably a good idea uh, I don't see anyone in OGY listed hopefully if not I guess whoops <laughs> but this is this is this is part of the risk associated 
this was a CCP fix, I'll have you know. <laughs> okay. Hopefully no bubbles, no one in loco, we're good. What a successful jump bridge. Okay, so for the sake of time, I just uh, skipped the whole jump bridging from OGY to UFO part. You get the idea. Right click the jump bridge, go through. I did forget to mention though, please, please, please don't have your micro warp drive on when you're jump bridging because you will use a whole bunch of LO, which might make it so the person after you can't jump. Plus it costs hard more, which kind of sucks. So don't do that. Don't be that guy. So uh, now we're docking in UFO. We're good. We're good to go. Um, so while I'm docked, I'll explain jump fatigue in simple terms to you, basically. So you have a jump fatigue timer right here. And uh, there's also usually an orange circle right here. Orange circle is more important. The orange circle is the time that you can't use any sort of jump methods for. Like, if you if you decided to get in your carrier right now and jump, you wouldn't be able to jump. It goes for any kind of jumping. Or if there was like a an op where we were about to take a jump bridge and you had an orange timer, you can't take the Titan bridge. Um, and the fatigue timer, the reason why it matters is the longer the fatigue timer, the longer your orange timer is going to be. And the reason why Pastores are nice is that you only have a timer for two minutes. Mine's already gone, which is awesome. So, uh, other ships, it's like four, four minutes for the first time. And then like it grows, uh, for your based on your fatigue timer and the distance of the jump. If you want to read more about the actual mechanics, there's like a million Wikipedia articles. By all means, go ahead and do the math until your little nerd heart is content. Um, but that's like a simple explanation. It's really what you need to know for now. So basically, if you jump too much, you're not going to be able to okay, jump Okay, so alternatives to jump bridging and the benefits and costs of jump bridging. So the benefits of jump bridging is that it's pretty fast and um, it's kind of fun to do and you can, you could bring something else other than a hauler but that kind of sucks for your fatigue. Um, and if you did, you risk the chance of having a really, really long jump fatigue cooldown time. And what if, what if, um, what if we had a Titan tackled and we were about to take a Titan bridge to go kill it, but you couldn't bridge and then you missed the Titan kill, you would be pretty sad about that. So that's definitely a downside of jump bridging. Um, and it's not 100% safe either. That that jump between K7D and OGY is kind of dangerous. Like anyone could go there and set up a bubble or do something to kill you, which would kind of suck. Um, especially on the in gate because if, if there was a bubble and you jumped in and there wasn't an intel, it would take you kind of a long time to burn back to the gate or burn out of the bubble and I just don't think your chances of surviving are that great. So, um, but uh, once again, jump bridging is pretty fast. Um, the other alternative is you could build a travel interceptor and go gate by gate all the way between the systems. It's probably the slowest method and it takes kind of a lot of s skill training because you have to have like a forget five interceptor. Some other little support skills would be nice. Um, and you have to pay for the interceptor itself, which is usually like 30 million isk. Which, if you're a new player, that kind of sucks too. Um, and it's still not 100% safe, but um, it's still probably safer than bridging. Like it, it just has the possibility of avoiding gate camps. It's a little bit higher. Um, so the another alternative is you could jump clone, but the downside of that is that if you don't have infromorph synchronization trained, it takes 24 hours to be able to jump clone again, which kind of sucks. And if you had implants in your other jump clone, you could be leaving behind your implants in that one. That would be annoying, maybe. 
Um, but if you do feel like that's the route you want to take, all you do is open up the clone bay. Um, you can use your jump clone right here. I don't have one installed. And if you want to set one up, all you do is dock in UFO or A2 and hit install clone. And then you just switch every 24 hours if you wanted to. The other option is you can set A2 or UFO as your home station and I could just undock and pod right now and just self-destruct and would be back in A2. Both of these ways are 100% safe. Um, once again though, implants could kind of suck with it and it only goes one way. So if you wanted to go from UFO to A2 back to UFO, you can't do it. You'd have to find a different way to get back to UFO. That's the basics of jump bridging. To recap, um, use a bestower to travel. Don't turn on your micro warp drive. Be careful of the gates and of cloaky things on the jump bridges. And um, consider alternatives to jump bridging, make because you could you could end up with a high timer if you do it too often. Um, so be sure you watch that little orange timer. It was on the screen for like a second because it it's really fast if you're in a bestower. Um, and if you need a store, don't hesitate to contact NBI. We will have some in stock in A2 at least, and hopefully you po pretty soon. Skill training completed.